Hi, I'm Phil and today we're going to be looking at Pico Flash and how we program it so that you can have the patterns you want and to make it look as flashy as you can. Well, there's a few different patterns we can choose from. That's because this uh, project is set up using a thing called multiplexing. And the one at the moment is using these patterns down the right hand side, all eight. It goes in one direction and then it goes back in the other direction. And it's also using this center LEDs to flash the high brightness uh, water clear LEDs in the center. But you can choose from any of these patterns. There's a whole stack of patterns. Some have four lights on, so they actually look a bit brighter. Uh, the ones with eight lights look the brightest. Um, and, uh, and you can flicker between those at different speeds and with different combinations. So let's have a look at how to program the Pico Flash with Pico Flow Alpha. Firstly, we're going to create a flow diagram using some output tools and some delay tools. And uh, we'll use multiple of these so that we can create um, eight different patterns in a direction. And we'll be testing it and make, making it work uh, before we do anything extra. So I've changed the delay to 0.2 of a second. And I'm just gonna overlap these a little bit so that I can squash them up nice and tight using the align and the distribute button. There we go. Okay, so making sure all of those arrows are connected from left to right will give us the flow diagram that we want. And there's four output tools. So we're going to copy that so that we can have eight output tools because that's what we need. So there's eight output tools. And the first thing we'll do is we'll go into the output tool and we'll make a couple of these, oh, sorry, wrong way. We'll make a couple of these uh, inputs. And although we're not using inputs, that's just to make it a bit easier to understand what we're doing with the outputs. So we're using RB5, RB4, RB1 and RB2. And you'll see that corresponds to the four outputs that we're showing up here. Although the states we're using are high, low, and input. So high will turn it up to 4.5 volts, low will turn the output to zero volts. And when we make it an input, it's a floating voltage. Well, basically, it doesn't register as a voltage unless you put something on it. So uh, it doesn't actually output anything at all. It's um, basically, it's been turned off. So, um, so they're the three states. We're not going to use the ignore state because that's not necessary for what we're doing. Ignore just means don't change anything from the previous state. So, um, but if you set the, these four pins as the outputs, that's what we need to start. And just check all of the rest of them should update automatically um, because the software can recognize what the first change uh, that occurs with the output tool. So let's start. Pin five is on high. Pin four is low. Pin one is low. And pin two is an input. So we're adjusting those pins according to those uh, what's on the pattern. And so that would be pattern one. Now, for each one of these, we're going to use a different pattern. So now we need low, high, input, input to get pattern number two. So low, high, input, input. And that will give us num pattern two. Pattern three, input, high, low, input. And pattern four, input, low, high, input. Pattern five, input, input, high, low. Pattern six, input, input, low, high. Pattern seven, low, input, input, high. Pattern eight, high, input, low, low. Pattern 
So there we have the eight patterns that we need to use. And I'm just going to link these up so that we can test them to make sure that our program is right and that we have used each one of those LEDs correctly. So assembly code, program 12F508. There we have it. So it's lighting up each one of those LEDs correctly and giving us the required pattern that we need. Now, we actually wanna make this a little bit different we're going to uh, copy these eight tools. Control C for copy, Control V for paste. And we're going to put them down below. Now the reason for this is we don't want to uh, necessarily go through and adjust the outputs again. That might take us a little bit of time. So uh, if we go and delete every second link line, we can move these tools around quite easily. So what we need to do is move pattern one down to the end and pattern eight up to the start. Pattern two comes down, pattern seven goes back up, pattern three comes down, pattern six goes up, Pattern four comes down and pattern five goes back up. So in doing that, we reverse the, the order so that this second lot of patterns goes from uh, pattern eight down through to pattern one. Now, of course, we need to link these back up, but before I do that, I'm going to align and distribute just to make it a little bit easier. Of course, you'll have more space on the screen. I've got a low resolution monitor and it's also a bit crowded while I'm trying to have these other files open at the same time. In fact, we don't need the patterns anymore. So how about I spread things out a little bit? making sure you select every pattern that you need to be distributed. Let's do that again. Those align and I'll make sure we distribute these correctly. Whoops, make sure you select them all. That's better. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to put in a couple of cycle tools and the cycle tool will mean we can repeat some of this code over and over just by counting how many cycles we want. So if I put a cycle tool at the start of this top section and then I bring it around so it joins up with the cycle tool, we have a complete loop. And so it can count how many cycles you want that loop of code to go through and I'll bring another cycle tool in. Link that one up. And once again, we'll take this end tool, bring it around. I might move those down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we need to make sure that the base or the bottom true is when it gets to four completed cycles. False means it's not quite at four completed cycles, so it's gonna go through and do a couple more. Uh, so this one we need on four cycles. True, instead of being on the bottom node, we want it to be on the left node. And we'll link those up like so. And that should be right for us. Now we'll just make sure, oh, this one's not connected up. So we'll hook that one up as well. Okay, so assembly code. There it is. And we'll click program 12F508. And you'll see that those lights will go around. So the top one should get to this point four times. There it does. 
and it reverses and goes back four times to this point. There it is. Okay, so we've got that working at the moment. The last thing we might do is, is look at how to turn these center LEDs on and off. At the moment, you'll see they're not, they're not working there. So uh, we can go into our output tools and all we need to do is we need to make one of these an output and the other one needs to be low and that's going to turn it on. So if we have a look at our, uh, our system diagram, this is the, the actual pattern we're looking at. These center six LEDs are separate from the other 16. So, and making pin zero low is going to turn those LEDs off. So if you make pin zero high, sorry, pin zero low turns it on, pin zero high is going to turn it off, or making it an input is going to turn it off. And I can show you uh, why that is. Let's have a look at the schematic. So the schematic shows us that there are four pins on the right hand side, GP1, 2, 4 and 5 that control these 16 LEDs and GP0 controls these six LEDs individually of those 16. You'll see that you need to turn on, say, um, diode 3 here, you would need to use pins uh, GP2 and pin GP5 and you'd actually have to make the other ones an input, otherwise it's going to turn on the other diodes as well. So, um, so that's how multiplexing works. It means that we only need four pins there to essentially control eight LEDs. And in true multiplexing, you could actually control more. You can control up to 12 LEDs. Uh, these eight LEDs are just mimicking what the first eight LEDs are doing. So anything you see on the right-hand side will basically be done on the left-hand side um, in a sort of a mirrored way. Okay, so, uh, so that's how we're going to adjust uh, these outputs, making them output and low. And if we do that to every second output tool, then that will give us a nice flickering effect. And it's quite easy to do. Of course, if you have any mistakes, it doesn't affect the other LEDs, which is nice. So assembly code and program. And you can see now the LEDs are flashing nicely and it's giving us a, a quite a nice display. You might want to put that on the back of your bicycle or uh, somewhere that you want extra visibility. So I hope you've enjoyed that. How to program the Pico Flash using Pico Flow Alpha. See you later.